In geometry, the stereographic projection is a particular mapping that projects a sphere onto a plane. The projection is defined on the entire sphere, except at one point. The projection point, where it is defined, the mapping is smooth and bijective. It is conformal, meaning that it preserves angles. It is neither isometric nor area-preserving. That is, it preserves neither distances nor the areas of figures. Intuitively, then, the stereographic projection is a way of picturing the sphere as the plane, with some inevitable compromises. Because the sphere and the plane appear in many areas of mathematics and its applications, so does the stereographic projection. It finds use in diverse fields including complex analysis, cartography, geology, and photography. In practice, the projection is carried out by computer or by hand using a special kind of graph paper called a stereographic net, shortened to stereonet or wealth net. History The stereographic projection was known to Hippicus, Ptolemy and probably earlier to the Egyptians. It was originally known as the planisphere projection. Planisphere Aerium by Ptolemy is the oldest surviving document that describes it. One of its most important uses was the representation of celestial charts. The term planisphere is still used to refer to such charts. It is believed that the earliest existing world map, created in 1507 by Gualtarius Ludd of St. D.I. Acute, is based upon the stereographic projection, mapping each hemisphere as a circular disk. The equatorial aspect of the stereographic projection, commonly used for maps of the eastern and western hemispheres in the 17th and 18th centuries, was utilized by the ancient astronomers like Ptolemy. François de Aiguillon gave the stereographic projection its current name in his 1613 work Opticorum Libri Sex Philosophies Juxta ac Mathematicis Utiles. In 1695, Edmund Halley, motivated by his interest in star charts, published the first mathematical proof that this map is conformal. He used the recently established tools of calculus, invented by his friend Isaac Newton. Definition This section focuses on the projection of the unit sphere from the North Pole onto the plane through the equator. Other formulations are treated in later sections. The unit sphere in three-dimensional space R3 is the set of points such that x2 plus y2 plus z2 equals 1. Let n equals be the north pole, and let m be the rest of the sphere. The plane z equals 0 runs through the center of the sphere. The equator is the intersection of the sphere with this plane. For any point P on M, there is a unique line through N and P, and this line intersects the plane Z equals zero in exactly one point P. Define the stereographic projection of P to be this point P in the plane. In Cartesian coordinates on the sphere and on the plane, the projection and its inverse are given by the formulas in spherical coordinates on the sphere and polar coordinates on the plane. The projection and its inverse are here. Phi is understood to have value pi when r equals zero. Also, there are many ways to rewrite these formulas using trigonometric identities. In cylindrical coordinates on the sphere and polar coordinates on the plane, the projection and its inverse are properties. The stereographic projection defined in the preceding section sends the south pole of the unit sphere to the equator to the unit circle, the southern hemisphere to the region inside the circle, and the northern hemisphere to the region outside the circle. The projection is not defined at the projection point n equals. Small neighborhoods of this point are sent to subsets of the plane far away from. The closer P is to, the more distant its image is from in the plane. For this reason it is common to speak of as mapping to, infinity, in the plane, and of the sphere as completing the plane by adding the, point at infinity. This notion finds utility in projective geometry and complex analysis. On a merely topological level, it illustrates how the sphere is homeomorphic to the one-point compactification of the plane. In Cartesian coordinates a point P on the sphere and its image P on the plane either both are rational points or none of them. 
Stereographic projection is conformal, meaning that it preserves the angles at which curves cross each other. On the other hand, stereographic projection does not preserve area, in general. The area of a region of the sphere does not equal the area of its projection onto the plane. The area element is given in coordinates by along the unit circle, where x2 plus y2 equals 1. There is no infinitesimal distortion of area. Near areas are distorted by a factor of 4, and near infinity areas are distorted by arbitrarily small factors. The metric is given in coordinates by and is the unique formula found in Bernhard Riem in Habilitation Schrift on the Foundations of Geometry delivered at Göttingen in 1854, and entitled Duber die Hypothesen Welcher der Geometrie zu Grunde Legion. No map from the sphere to the plane can be both conformal and area-preserving. If it were, then it would be a local isometry and would preserve Gaussian curvature. The sphere and the plane have different Gaussian curvatures, so this is impossible. The conformality of the stereographic projection implies a number of convenient geometric properties. Circles on the sphere that do not pass through the point of projection are projected to circles on the plane. Circles on the sphere that do pass through the point of projection are projected to straight lines on the plane. These lines are sometimes thought of as circles through the point at infinity or circles of infinite radius. All lines in the plane, when transformed to circles on the sphere by the inverse of stereographic projection, intersect each other at infinity. Parallel lines, which do not intersect in the plane, are tangent at infinity. Thus all lines in the plane intersect somewhere in the sphere, either transversely at two points, or tangently at infinity. The loxodromes of the sphere map to curves on the plane of the form where the parameter measures the tightness of the loxodrome. Thus loxodromes correspond to logarithmic spirals. These spirals intersect radial lines in the plane at equal angles, just as the loxodromes intersect meridians on the sphere at equal angles. The stereographic projection relates to the plane inversion in a simple way. Let P and Q be two points on the sphere with projections P and Q on the plane. Then P and Q are inverse of images of each other in the image of the equatorial circle if and only if P and Q are reflections of each other in the equatorial plane. In other words, if P is a point on the sphere, but not a North Pole, N and not its antipode, the South Pole, S. P is the image of P in a stereographic projection with the projection point N in. P is the image of P in a stereographic projection with the projection point S. Then P and P are inverse of images of each other in the unit circle. Wolf net. Stereographic projection plots can be carried out by a computer using the explicit formulas given above. However, for graphing by hand these formulas are unwieldy. Instead, it is common to use graph paper designed specifically for the task. This special graph paper is called a Serianet or Wolfnet, after the Russian mineralogist George Wolf. To make a Wolfnet, one places a grid of parallels and meridians on the hemisphere, and then stereographically projects these curves to the disk. Depending on the particular projection used, the parallels and meridians may or may not match those usually encountered in geography. For example, the figure at left is constructed using the conventions of the definition section above. Because the projection point is, the Wolf net depicts the southern hemisphere Z0. The equator plots at the circular boundary of the Wolf net, and the south pole plots at the center of the Wolf net. The parallels are chosen to be small circles about the y-axis, and all of the meridians pass through in. In the figure, the area distorting property of the stereographic projection can be seen by comparing a grid sector near the center of the net with one at the far right of the net. The two sectors have equal areas on the sphere. On the disk, the latter has nearly four times the area of the former. If one uses finer and finer grids on the sphere, then the ratio of the areas approaches exactly four. On the Wolf net, the images of the parallels and meridians intersect at right angles. 
This orthogonality property is a consequence of the angle-preserving property of the stereoscopic projection. For an example of the use of the Wolf net, imagine two copies of it on thin paper, one atop the other, aligned and tacked at their mutual center. Let P be the point on the lower unit hemisphere whose spherical coordinates are and whose Cartesian coordinates are. This point lies on a line oriented 60 degrees counterclockwise from the positive x-axis and 50 degrees below the horizontal plane z equals 0. Once these angles are known, there are four steps to plotting P. Using the grid lines, which are spaced 10 degrees apart in the figures here, mark the point on the edge of the net that is 60 degrees counterclockwise from the point. Rotate the top net until this point is aligned with on the bottom net. Using the grid lines on the bottom net, mark the point that is 50 degrees toward the center from that point. Rotate the top net oppositely to how it was oriented before, to bring it back into alignment with the bottom net. The point marked in step 3 is then the projection that we wanted. To plot other points, whose angles are not such round numbers as 60 degrees and 50 degrees, one must visually interpolate between the nearest grid lines. It is helpful to have a net with finer spacing than 10 degrees. Spacings of 2 degrees are common. To find the central angle between two points on the sphere based on their stereographic plot, overlay the plot on a wolf net and rotate the plot about the center until the two points lie on or near a meridian. Then, measure the angle between them by counting grid lines along that meridian. Two points P1 and P2 are drawn on a transparent sheet tacked at the origin of a wolf net. The transparent sheet is rotated and the central angle is read along the common meridian to both points P1 and P2. Other Formulations and Generalizations some authors define stereographic projection from the North Pole onto the plane Z equals minus 1, which is tangent to the unit sphere at the South Pole. The values X and Y produced by this projection are exactly twice those produced by the equatorial projection described in the preceding section. For example, this projection sends the equator to the circle of radius 2 centered at the origin while the equatorial projection produces no infinitesimal area distortion along the equator. This pole tangent projection instead produces no infinitesimal area distortion at the south pole. Other authors use a sphere of radius one half and the plane Z equals minus one half. In this case the formulae become in general, E does not contain Q. As long as E meets these conditions, then for any point P other than Q the line through P and Q meets E in exactly one point P, which is defined to be the stereographic projection of P onto E. All of the formulations of stereographic projection described thus far have the same essential properties. They are smooth bijections defined everywhere except at the projection point. They are conformal and not area-preserving. More generally, stereographic projection may be applied to the n-sphere Sn in dimensional Euclidean space n plus 1. If Q is a point of Sn in Ea hyperplane in n plus 1, then the stereographic projection of a point PSN minus Q is the point P of intersection of the line QP with E. In Cartesian coordinates on the sphere and on the plane, the projection from Q equals is given by defining the inverse is given by N. Still more generally, suppose that S is a quadric hypersurface in the projective space PN plus 1. In other words, S is the locus of zeros of a non-singular quadratic form F in the homogeneous coordinates Xi. Fix any point Q on S and a hyperplane E in Pn plus 1 not containing Q. Then the stereographic projection of a point P in S minus Q is the unique point of intersection of QP with E. As before, the stereographic projection is conformal and invertible outside of a small set. The stereographic projection presents the quadric hypersurface as a rational hypersurface. This construction plays a role in algebraic geometry and conformal geometry. Applications within mathematics 
complex analysis although any stereographic projection misses one point on the sphere. The entire sphere can be mapped using two projections from distinct projection points. In other words, the sphere can be covered by two stereographic parametrizations from the plane. The parametrizations can be chosen to induce the same orientation on the sphere. Together, they describe the sphere as an oriented surface. This construction has special significance in complex analysis. The point in the real plane can be identified with the complex number zeta equals x plus i y. The stereographic projection from the North Pole onto the equatorial plane is then similarly, letting g equals x minus i y be another complex coordinate. The functions define a stereographic projection from the South Pole onto the equatorial plane. The transition maps between the zeta and she coordinates are then zeta equals 1, she and she equals 1, zeta, with zeta approaching 0 as she goes to infinity, and vice versa. This facilitates an elegant and useful notion of infinity for the complex numbers and indeed an entire theory of meromorphic functions mapping to the Riemann sphere. The standard metric on the unit sphere agrees with the Fubini study metric on the Riemann sphere. Visualization of lines and planes The set of all lines through the origin in three-dimensional space forms a space called the real projective plane. This space is difficult to visualize because it cannot be embedded in three-dimensional space. However, one can almost visualize it as a disk as follows. Any line through the origin intersects the southern hemisphere's Z0 in a point, which can then be stereographically projected to a point on a disk. Horizontal lines intersect the southern hemisphere in two antipodal points along the equator, either of which can be projected to the disk. It is understood that antipodal points on the boundary of the disk represent a single line. So any set of lines through the origin can be pictured, almost perfectly, as a set of points in a disk. Also, every plane through the origin intersects the unit sphere in a great circle, called the trace of the plane. This circle maps to a circle under stereographic projection, so the projection lets us visualize planes as circular arcs in the disk. Prior to the availability of computers, stereographic projections with great circles often involved drawing large radius arcs that required use of a beam compass. Computers now make this task much easier. Further associated with each plane is a unique line, called the plane's pole, that passes through the origin and is perpendicular to the plane. This line can be plotted as a point on the disk just as any line through the origin can. So the stereographic projection also lets us visualize planes as points in the disk. For plots involving many planes, plotting their poles produces a less cluttered picture than plotting their traces. This construction is used to visualize directional data in crystallography and geology, as described below. Other visualization stereographic projection is also applied to the visualization of polytopes. In a Schlegel diagram, an n-dimensional polytope in Rn plus 1 is projected onto an n-dimensional sphere, which is then stereographically projected onto Rn. The reduction from Rn plus 1 to Rn can make the polytope easier to visualize and understand. Arithmetic geometry in elementary arithmetic geometry Stereographic projection from the unit circle provides a means to describe all primitive Pythagorean triples. Specifically, stereographic projection from the North Pole onto the x-axis gives a one-to-one -one correspondence between the rational number points on the unit circle and the rational points of the x-axis. If is a rational point on the x-axis, then its inverse stereographic projection is the point which gives Euclid's formula for a Pythagorean triple. Tangent half-angle substitution The pair of trigonometric functions can be thought of as parametrizing the unit circle. The stereographic projection gives an alternative parametrization of the unit circle. Under this reparametrization, the length element dx of the unit circle goes over to this substitution can sometimes simplify integrals involving trigonometric functions.